Good afternoon, Life Good Church. Good afternoon, Life Church. We are excited to worship with you once again virtually, so feel free to sing along as we worship our God. Hallelujah. God, your love is never failing, never ending, Lord. Hallelujah. Over the mountains and the seas, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healing set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Over the mountains and the seas, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healing set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 feel like dancing It's foolishness I know But when the world has seen the light They will dance with joy like we're dancing now Oh, I feel like dancing It's foolishness I know when the world has seen a light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. Forever, 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 I can sing of your love. Sing of your love, I could sing of your love forever. 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 Forever, forever. just want to be in your presence where there's fullness of joy where there's peace God be glorified by our lives Lord you get all the glory we love you God Lord if I find favor in your sight Lord I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see. To behold you as my King For your glory I will do anything Just 
just to see you, my God, to behold you as my King. Say, Lord, if I find favor, find favor in your sight. Say, Lord, please, Lord, please, hear my heart's cry. Just to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. Cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near far. Travel Come on, I lift it up. Far. Say for your glory. For your glory. I will do anything. I will do yeah. anything. Just to see you guys. gotta be where you are I wanna be where you are I gotta be where you are Lord I wanna be where you are let there be your hearts cry today gotta be where hear our hearts God I wanna be where you are I gotta be where you I wanna be, I wanna be where you are in your presence, God. I wanna be where you are. Sing it out, y'all. I gotta be where. To behold 
Greetings Life Church, this is Pastor Ben here and I am so grateful that you've decided to join with us this wonderful Sunday afternoon. I want to say of course thank you to our worship team. They are doing an awesome job with continually providing us with great music that we can worship our God to. Life Church, me and Pastor Ashley are so grateful that you are continuing to participate in the virtual services that we have and the virtual uh, platforms that we've been putting up here that you may be edified with the Word of God as well as prayer. If you are a visitor uh, to our virtual service, we want to say thank you first of all for choosing to worship with us because we know uh, in this time of pandemic you have a lot of options, but the fact that you've decided to stay with us uh, during uh, this time on this Sunday, we truly, truly uh, don't take it for granted and thank you for allowing us the opportunity to worship with you. If you could uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page as well as our Instagram so you can get updates about what we have going on here at Life Church. There's a lot of things that we have on the way and we don't want you to miss out on any of them. Now we do have a couple of announcements for you and I'm gonna go over those right now. We want to remind you all that we are having Bible study on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom as well as prayer call on Thursdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. So in order for you to participate in that, we ask that you would check the pulse and make sure that you're able to join in and fellowship with the other believers as we go over God's word and as we petition the Lord asking for his wisdom and guidance in our lives. Now I told you last week we are going to be having a fellowship coming up and we do have a date for that and we're going to give you more instruction about how you can participate participate, but we're going to have a Lunch with Life Fellowship. That's going to be taking place on October 25th at 1.30 p.m. That's right after our worship experience, and it's just going to be a time for us to share. There'll be more details uh, given via the Pulse, so be sure to stay tuned for more information on that. Also, be sure to connect with our playlist on YouTube. We've actually archived the Bible studies and the different sermons together. So you'll be able to have a more cohesive streaming experience whenever you're listening to services and Bible studies that we have had before. Now, one thing we do want to also let you guys know is for those of you who were not able to get the pulse or the email updates this past week that means from last Saturday to this week uh, we want to let you know that all you have to do is check your promotions and just move the email from there into your regular inbox and there should be an option for you to uh, have this particular MailChimp account sent to your regular inbox so it's not sent to either your promotions or your spam folder. We know some of you haven't been able to get the pulse there. At this point, we're going to have offering. We're going to put up a number on the screen and leave it up there for a little bit so you'll have enough time to be able to text uh, to give 
for our ministries. We are so grateful for your continued support of Life Church, and we have so many things coming down the pipe for you guys. Uh, it is really our goal to serve you in a clear and effective way, and your support goes a long way when it comes to this ministry. Now we're going to have the word of God from Pastor Ashley Harris. He's going to be finishing his two-part series in the midst of it all as we follow the Apostle Paul when he is on a ship that is really in a perilous situation. I pray that you guys are blessed by what Pastor Ashley has to say and that God richly blesses you. Love you all and I'll see you next time. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be among you today to offer you the word of the Lord right where you are. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, God. We magnify your name. We honor you because you are the Holy One, God. We honor you today, God, because you are the Great One. We honor you today, God, because there is no one but you. You are perfect and true, God. You are pure in all of your ways, God. You are excellent. God, you are wonderful, Lord God, and there is no one but you. Lord God, we thank you for your strength, and we thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you that you are with us in every circumstance, in every situation. We thank you for your word and what you have to say to us, God, Lord. So as we dive into your word, Master, may it dive into us, God, Lord. Speak a word today, Lord God, that will strengthen the hearts of your people, that will establish us, that will help us to understand our eternal perspective, our kingdom perspective. Lord God, as it relates to the gospel of Jesus Christ, help us to know our position, O oh God, in the, and the, as we are in time, church, in the last day, God, help us to understand our position and give us the grace to stand, the grace to endure, Lord God, the grace to be strengthened and to stand in the time and the day that we have been assigned to. Father God, we trust in you. And we hope in you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, last time I was before you, we were um, doing the first part of our series, In the Midst of It All. And we were dealing with Paul, who was at Fairhaven, and Paul finding himself transitioning in the midst of a stormy season. Paul is a prisoner. And that while he is a prisoner, he has still yet has major perspective concerning the voyage, and he expresses it. Only to be met with the people who will not follow his perspective. Um, the centurion may, pays more attention to the pilot, and together they make a on a, on a based on assumption and a hunch of how the journey will go. They determine to take everyone on the journey, and it brings us to our passage today. And for your reading, we're going to be for your hearing, we're going to be reading Acts twenty seven twenty through twenty seven, Acts twenty seven twenty through twenty seven, and then we're going to break it up and go from thirty three to thirty seven. Again, we're beginning at Acts 27, 20 through 27. And when you have it, you can shout out amen. You can run around your house. You can type amen in the chat, whatever God moves you to do. That's what you can do. Acts 27, 20 through 27. And it reads, When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and have not set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you, take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sell with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as, uh, as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. Drop down to verse 33. And he says, As day was about to dawn, Paul urged them, all to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have continued in suspense and without food, having taken nothing. Therefore, I urge you, take some food, for it will give you strength, for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. Hey, thank you, Jesus. And when he said, the, said these things, he took bread, 
and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. My God, my God, my brothers and my sisters, as we said before, Paul finds himself in the midst of a stormy season, transitioning in the midst of a stormy season. And he is in this transition based upon the leadership and the direction of the pilot. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Based upon the leadership and the direction, based upon the hunches and the assumptions of the pilot, him and 276 other people find themselves in, a, in, in the midst of this stormy transition. Transition. Oh my God, my brothers and my sisters, we can find ourselves understanding this move, understanding what Paul is going through as we ourselves, as I said in last week's sermon, are transitioning in a midst of a stormy season. As a nation, as a people, as a country, we are transitioning in a midst of a stormy season. Hear clearly the word of the Lord that is being expressed to you today. We are transitioning in a midst of a stormy season. God has allowed it. God has allotted for us to transition in the midst of a stormy season based upon hunches of our leadership, based upon how this country may be led, based upon perceptions or preconceived notions. But nonetheless, we all are finding ourselves transitioning in the midst of a stormy season. Paul finds him in himself in the ship with everyone else. He finds himself experiencing the woes that everyone else is experiencing. He finds himself experiencing the trouble that everyone else ex is experiencing. And as a believer, you can uh, bet your bottom dollar that we are, are experiencing every woe, every trial that our country is experiencing. We are residents here. So as we are here, we are going to experience everything that is happening in our country. We are already experiencing with pandemic, with trial, with much death, with with loss, with disease, with hurricanes, with fires, with everything that is happening, every wind that hits this country, we are going to feel and we are going to experience because we are in the boat with everyone in this country and we are all transitioning in the midst of a stormy season, even transition leadership, possibly in the midst of a stormy season as we look to the future. And while our leader may seem and may not be determined yet or be unclear what the leader may be, know that we are yet transitioning in the midst of a stormy season. And just like they said in, in Frozen, like Elsa said, let the, let the storm rage on, right? God has chosen that the storm, my God, would rage on, right? And that we are getting into the thick of it and it's getting heavier and it's getting harder and they find themselves in the thick of a storm while the storm rages on, while the winds are contrary to our forward progress, while the ship takes on water and while it is beaten by the waves, God still has position, perspective, and purpose for his church in this time. Yes, we are not going through a storm aimlessly, but know that while the storm rages on, while the storm is getting heavy, while the winds are blowing, while we are experiencing all of the woes that are happening to this country, hear and know that God has purpose, that God has position, perspective, and purpose for his people in this time. What do we fall, find Paul doing in this time? What do we find him doing? We find Paul speaking. Yes, we find Paul speaking. Verses 23, 20 to 23 says, When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of being saved was at last abandoned, since they had been without food for a long time. Paul stood up among them and said, he stood up and he began to speak. What did he say? He said, first of all, y'all should listen to me. Uh, okay, thank you. He was Paul was that guy. He said, first of all, um, I told you so. So what do you think what was going to happen? Like you thought I was playing? <laughs> Paul stood up and said, men, you should have listened to me and have not set sail here and incurred this injury upon yourself and loss. But be not afraid. Yet he tells them to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I worship. 
he becomes, Paul stands up and begins to speak and he becomes a herald of hope, right? Understand that our position in the midst of the stormy transition and even as an end time church is to be heralds of hope. Yes, heralds of hope. We are to be speaking. Our position is to be a speaking. We are a speaking church, right? We ought not to be a silent church, right? A silent church is a dead church, right? We ought to be a speaking church, our mouth to be open. Yes, there may be times that God may call you to be silent, but I guarantee you that this is not the time nor the season has God called you to be quiet. But as a church, this is the time for us to be speaking. Yes, we are, if you will, as watchmen, right? What is a watchman? The watchman in Ezekiel 33, one through six, reading when you have the opportunity. But to paraphrase it, a watchman was someone who was called out from the people of God and he was set above the people to watch out for the enemy. And the Bible says that when he sees the sword coming against the land, he blows the trumpet to warn the people. Right. Then if anyone hears the trumpet, but does not heed the warning and the sword comes and takes their life, their blood will be on their own head. But if the watchman sees the sword coming, and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people and the sword comes and takes someone's life. That person's life will be taken because of their sin, but I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. That is the word of the Lord. Paul finds himself, if you will, as a type of watchman. How do we know this? That even in Acts 18, um, verse six, he tells them that because he has preached the gospel and they refuse to listen, he said, the blood is off my hands, right? I have given you, I have sounded the alarm to you. I've given you the gospel of Jesus Christ and you have chosen not to listen. So the blood is off my hands. My brothers and my sisters, as we are heralds of hope and heralds of God's truth, we must understand that we stand today as modern day watchmen. My God, we stand today as watchmen on the wall for God, that we will know and perceive the will of God, that we will know and understand the way of God and that we begin to herald God's will, herald God's way, herald the gospel of Jesus Christ over the nation and tell them that uh, you need to understand that God is moving to turn around, to repent, hear the word of the Lord, to repent. And for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's what Jesus came preaching. When he came down into the earth, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It is here. It is near. It has come to you. Grace has come. Mercy has come. Turn around and receive strength. Turn around and seek the way of God. Turn around and do the will of God. And the church's message has not changed, right? That as we are heralds of hope, we must stand as watchmen and decree the word of the Lord, that the Lord, the King of uh, glory, the Lord of hosts has drawn his sword against iniquity, against unrighteousness, against unholiness. And he who was on the Lord's side, huh? he who's on the Lord's side, may he stand up, right? We must stand up as watchmen and declare the word of the Lord, that the King of hosts has ready to seize iniquity. The King of hosts is ready to abolish his enemies for the Bible says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered, right? We must understand that God does not like unrighteousness or unwickedness. And how long do you think you will continue in wickedness and not recure and not incur uh, all the judgment that is upon the works that you have done in the sight of God? Turn around and receive mercy. Turn around and receive grace. Heralds of hope in a time of a dark situation. This is where Paul finds himself being a herald of hope in a midst of a dark situation. If Paul never spoke his, his perspective before the men, if he never gave the message to the men, even before they started the journey, the men would have never would have missed the significance of the error. They would have missed the significance of the error. And, and they definitely would have not understood the undeserved graciousness God is showing to them. If Paul never spoke, it is important for us to be speaking the word of God. That pen men may know the error of their ways and they may see the glory, glorious, glorious grace that is being expressed to them through the power and through the mercy of God. Paul gives them a message of hope in the midst of a hopeless situation. And he is divinely visited by an angel. This message, he is divinely visited by God, divinely visited by an angel. I'm so glad to know, can I pause here and tell you, 
that in the midst of what we're going through, yes, we are transitioning in a stormy season, but I am so encouraged to know that God will divinely visit you in a stormy situation, that God will divinely visit you in a troubling situation while we are transitioning and while the, the ship may be rocking and while the winds may be blowing. We thank God that he sends an angel. He sends and he divinely steps in and visit his son in the midst of this, of this transition and it encourage us to know as a church that in the midst of our shipwreck, in the midst of our storm. God will divinely show up and he will visit his people. He will show up and he will strengthen his people. He will show up and he will give you the grace, the power, and the strength and the encouragement through his word to know that you will make it. You will persevere. You will survive. And I feel that God is strengthening. He's showing up in his grace and he's showing up in his power and he's showing up in his spirit to encourage the hearts of his people to know that there is yet more. And so that's what he does for Paul, he shows up and he gives a message through an angel to reassure him on the confidence of where they are going. And so this message that Paul gives, coupled with his faith, becomes a beacon of light. It becomes a beacon of a light to all those who are in the ship. My God, thank you, Jesus. Uh, as the church, the gospel and the foundation and the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and the demonstration and the application of that gospel through our faith. Hear me, hear me, hear me. The gospel and the demonstration and the application of that through our faith becomes a beacon of light to the world. What is our position? Our position is a speaking position and we are salt and light, right? We are to be salt and we are to be light in the midst of the culture that we live in. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says this, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, for, for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What is our position? Who are we? We are salt. What is salt? My God, thank you, Jesus. Salt is a preservative. Thank you, God. Salt, it causes the growth of, of pathogens and, and spoilage organisms is impeded when salt is present. No pathogens or spoilage can happen in an agent when salt is present. When salt is present, it prevents spoilage. It prevents things from going rotten. It prevents things from going bad. Oh, I'm preaching in here. Come on here, somebody. I can hear you out there in television land yelling amen. When the salt is present, right, it prevents things from rotting and going bad. Come on, somebody. Things may be bad. Things may be going bad. We may be in a bad situation, but know that it will not be totally despondent or despair because the salt is present. Huh? Ah, thank you, Jesus. You are the type that we were in church. I would tell Brandon, get on the organ right now. We can go home, right? <laughs> Come on here, Jesus, right? If we were in church, I'd tell you to touch your neighbor. We can't touch your neighbor now because we're in a pandemic. But what you can do is type in the chat and say that the salt is here. Go ahead and type in the chat. The salt is here. The salt is here. Yes, 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 yes. The salt is here. And who is the salt? After you type that in, say, I am the salt, right? I am the salt. And because of the church, because of the presence of God's people, that society will not completely erode and society will not be completely taken under because of the presence of the church, the salt, the sustaining agent that is being placed in society. Oh my God, to help preserve the culture, to help preserve morality and ethics here in the earth. It is the church that is a city. It is a church that is a salt. It is the church that is a city on a hill. We are the salt, right? And not only we are salt, but we are light, right? And he metaphorically speaks of our ranking and our position. A city set on a hill, right? He says a city that is set on a hill, it can't be hidden, right? You are set above, right? And you are light, giving light to all, giving light to the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you are on display. Hear that? Your life is to made to be on display. So why right, everybody looking at me? Yeah, you're supposed to be looked at. Everyone is supposed to be seeing you. Everyone's supposed to be seeing the good works that comes out of you and glorifying your father that is in heaven. You are light to the world. These men are saved on account of Paul's faith and request to God. You hear me? Did you hear that? These men are saved on account of Paul's faith 
and request to God. My God, your faith can becomes a covering for those who are in the ship with you. Your faith becomes a covering to those that are in the ship with you. How do I know that? Acts chapter 27, verse 24. He said, the angel said to Paul, do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand before Caesar and behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Did you hear that? God has granted, my God, hear that today. Hear it, hear the word of the Lord. God has granted all those who sail with you, right? The fact that the angel of the Lord says to him, God has granted all those who sail with you, lets me know if it's granted, that means he had to ask, right? Come on here. You can't have something granted to you if you didn't ask for it, right? And so how do I know? Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter seven, verses seven through eight, Jesus said, ask and it will be given you. Thank you, Jesus. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be open to you. Paul was asking. Paul was seeking. Oh, Jesus. Paul was knocking in the midst. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the midst of a stormy transition, in the midst of a rocky transition, you ought to be asking. You ought to be seeking. You ought to be knocking down the door of heaven and calling upon the name of the Lord. I told you our responsibility, our position is to be speaking. Not only speaking, speaking to a culture and speaking to a nation, but we are intercessors. You ought to be praying. You ought to be crying out to God. You ought to be speaking out to the heavens and asking God to intervene. You ought to be crying out to the name of the Lord, asking God to help you and not just help you, but help everybody else that's in the ship with you. My God, prayer and intercession is our position in our place. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9, 8, I know I'm moving, but we got to, there's much God's got to say to you. I got to take you on this journey. Come follow me on this journey. First Peter 2, 9a, he says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, right? You are a priesthood. The responsibility and the job of the priest was to go into the holy place. And one of their responsibilities was to offer um, prayers up at the altar of incense, right? That will go up in the most holy place behind the third curtain that will go up to God as intercession, right? It was the responsibility to offer sacrifices and prayers on behalf of the saints, right? And because we are a royal priesthood, right? We still offer up prayers and we still offer up intercession on behalf of the saints, right? We still offer to pray. Ah, the Bible tells us the opposition is to pray. In 1 Peter 4, 7, the Bible says, I feel a little preacher, y'all. 1 Peter 4, 7, the Bible says, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. You ought to be praying. James 4, 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. He said that the prayers of the righteous man has great power as it's working. Did you hear that? The prayers of a righteous man, hallelujah, has his has great power as it's working. The angel tells Paul, God has granted those who sell with you. 276 people have been granted with you. Do not underestimate the, your power and your position in prayer. Oh, Jesus. Understand it as the church. Do not hurt the child. Thank you, Jesus. Understand that your position as the church is on your knees. You don't fight just moving around in the earth. You fight on your knees. Your, your battleground, your position in the battleground is on your knees, speaking and praying and warring in the realm of the spirit. For we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. We don't do battle here in the earth. We do battle in the realm of the spirit as we pray and as we seek and as we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your position is on your knees. Do not underestimate the power of your position in prayer. If one man can pray an entire ship be saved and all their lives be granted. What happens when the church begins to pray? Oh my God, what will happen in that in the stormy transition if the church began to pray, if the church got on her knees, oh, this country could turn, the country can turn, the country can be saved, a whole world can be saved if the church took her place in prayer. For one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. What happens? If if we all join in prayer. I'll see you at prayer on Thursday uh -huh, at 7 p.m. You ought to tune in. Shameless plug, get in prayer. Praise God. That is our position. Now, because of prayer, God, Paul is divinely visited and he has perspective. 
my God, because of the prayers of Paul, he has received divine perspective. Some of you don't know what to do. Some of you don't know where to go. Some of you don't have a direction because you ain't praying because you ain't gotten, you don't have a space of prayer, but yet prayer will give you uh, and reinforce the internal perspective that we have through the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is prayer that helps you tune in. It is prayer that helps you dial into the word of God. It is prayer that helps you to rehearse and meditate the word of God to strengthen your soul and allow you to stand through every circumstance. Acts chapter 27, 24 through 26 says this. And he said, this is the angel of the Lord talking. He says, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar and behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. God reveals to Paul that first and foremost, he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord. Do not be afraid. Right. Why? Because, ooh, do not be afraid. Why? Because you ain't going to die. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Huh? Do not be afraid. Why? Because you ain't going to die. Well, why? Because I have a work to accomplish. I have a work to do through you. Do not be afraid. Can I, can I encourage somebody right now sitting out in television land watching me at home and you are full of fear and you are full of anxiety because you think that you're going to get sick and you think that you're going to die. <laughs> Mercy Jesus. Oh my God. You thought you are scared that you don't want to get sick and you don't want to die. You're scared that if you get infected that you might die. You're scared that all that's going on around you that you might die. But I got an encouraging word from you, from the word of the Lord, that be not afraid that you're going to make it through this. What is the word of the Lord? That there is an after this, that this ain't it, that this is not, God didn't bring you here to just kill you. Like I said before, and I've been saying this to you repeatedly throughout the sermon, and hopefully you caught the revelation by now. This is transition. This is not the end, right? This is not a stormy end. It's a stormy transition. That means that we're going somewhere. That means that there's a place that we have to get to. That means that God has more to accomplish. And that's what the angel of the Lord reminds Paul, that you have got to stand before Caesar. I have purpose for you there. I have something to accomplish throughout your life. And so don't let this storm or the shipwreck begin to thank you, speak loud to you to tell you what I'm going to do. No, 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 no. My purpose stands sure that I have a work to do. And for the church, this isn't it. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Know this, that for us, this is not it. But there is more. There is. And after this, there is more that what God will accomplish after the season. And know this, that even if death it does happen to some of us. They're still, and after this, uh -huh, we're still going to glory. We're still going to stand before our Savior. So no matter what, whether to be to be live is to is Christ, or to die is gain. No matter what, there is an after this, and that's what he assures Paul with this message today that there is an after this. The seasoned saints used to say it this way: "Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take." care of you. God has more that he wants to accomplish through you. And even through the stormy transition, he has purposed it so that you would make it through it. He has purpose that he wants to accomplish in you. He has purpose that he wants to do. It's because of Paul's faith in God and faithfulness to God. He has not, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's because of Paul's faith to God and faithfulness to God that everyone in the ship survives. My God, my God, it's because of faith, Paul's faith in God and faithfulness to God that everyone in the ship survives. Who does that remind you of? Exactly. It reminds you of Jesus, right? Because of one man's obedience, right? That many are saved, right? That when you are walking in, in your purpose, when you are uh, understanding your position and when you are having a life of prayer and you are fueled through the perspective of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you become a picture of Jesus to the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That when people see you, they ought to see Jesus. They ought to see remnants of Jesus. They ought to see the life of Jesus being expressed. We are expressions of Christ to the wall. Paul becomes a beacon of hope by sharing his perspective. And most importantly, the faithfulness of God, the faithfulness even of his faith, right? Before the people who are in the ship, he lived out his life in faith. It's important to note that Paul shares the good news with them, right? That he has been given. And that is our perspective. 
the good news that we have. What is our good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have got to share it with a dying world, my God. For it is the hope of the nations, right? And hope to every generation. He tells them in verse 25, so take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will do, it will be exactly as I have been told, right? I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told, right? They are living through this together. They are in this ship together, right? And Paul is expressing, he's literally living out his faith before them. He is living out his faith before them, right? He don't just have perspective, right? But he has a purpose, right? And what is our purpose in the midst of this thing? And as we close this thing on up, right? Our purpose is to live out our faith among the people. Go to Acts chapter 27, 33 through 37. What does it say? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, as day was about to dawn, Paul urged them all to take some food, saying, today is the 14th day that you have continued in suspense and without food, having taken nothing. Therefore, I urge you take some food, for it will, it will give you strength, for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. And when he said these things, he took bread and given thanks to God in the presence of all. He broke it and began to eat. Thank you, Jesus. I hear you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then they all encouraged and ate some food themselves. We were all in two. We were all 276 persons in the ship. Listen, our purpose in this last days is to live out our faith before the people. Live out loud, right? Your faith before the people. Paul did not just preach a message of faith and then showed a life that was contrary to the faith he preached. Paul preached faith and he lived faith, right? He preached faith and he lived faith. And that is our stance. You ought to preach faith and you ought to live faith. He said to them, listen, it's been 14 days and y'all been worrying and y'all been stressed out and y'all been depressed and you won't eat. But Paul said, you need to eat something, right? He said, you need to get you a sandwich. You need to eat something. You need strength for the journey, right? I've already told you, right? And I've already encouraged you that we are not going to lose our lives, that not one hair upon your head, right, would perish. So you ought to sit down and eat some food, right? Stop all this worrying and see some of us, right? Some of us, some of us, some of us in the household of faith, right? We preach faith, but we act as those who have no hope, right? We up late at night. We don't eat. We get, we get anxious and we stop eating and we're not taking care of ourselves and we're worrying as if any of that can stop the storm, as if any of that can keep them from a shipwreck. None of that is going to help, right? But he tells them, you need to eat some food, right? You need to take care of yourself. You need to get some strength in your body because know this. God has already spoken his word and his word is that we will make it. His word is that we will not perish. And so he stands up before them and he demonstrates before them a faithfulness. See, don't just preach the word. He stands up and he demonstrates. He shows them how to apply the faith. He gets up and he takes bread and in the presence of everyone, he gives thanksgiving. First and foremost, he stops and he's in good spirits in the midst of a storm. He's in good spirits, right? Showing an example of how to apply faith. His spirit is strong and good in the midst of the storm. And then not only that, he offers thanksgiving in the midst of the storm by applying the faith, showing people how to apply the faith. He takes bread and he gives thanks to God. Thank you for this food, God. Thank you for what you're doing, God. Bless this food that we're about to receive. May it have nourishment to our bodies and strength to us as we endure this journey. And he takes that food and he begins to eat, right? He said, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm trusting in God. I'm gonna eat, I'm hungry, right? I'm gonna rest in God and I'm gonna eat. And the rest of them were encouraged by this and ate food themselves. See, a lot of times as the church, we have preached a good message, but we have not shown the people how to walk it out, right? And because of that, the people are not encouraged, right? The people don't feel strengthened, but God is calling us as a church to not just preach the message, but then to grab them by the hand and say, come here, baby, let me teach you how to walk this out. Come here, honey, let me show you how to faith. Come here, honey, let me show you what to do. We're gonna rest in God. God already told us it's gonna be okay, so we're gonna go to bed at night. Ain't no sense of staying up worrying. Ain't no sense of being on the phone five hours talking about an issue that God had already solved, even though we haven't seen the breakthrough yet. We know the breakthrough coming. We're gonna praise God. We're gonna eat a meal. Let's go get something to eat. We're gonna 
going to trust in God. We're going to, oh, come on here, Jesus. We're going to believe God and we're going to get some rest. We're going to trust in the sovereignty of God and know that he is covering us. Accept the Lord. Build the city, the labor, labor in vain. Accept the Lord. Keep the city. The watchman rises in vain. It is the Lord that is protecting us. It's the Lord that is keeping us. And so God needs not a church that can be a herald of hope and heralding a message that they do not walk out themselves. No, 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 no. In this last day, believer, in this last day, Christian, in this last day saved, God is calling you to grab somebody by the hand and show them how to demonstrate the faith. God is calling you to live your faith out loud in front of the nations and show them how to trust God, show them how to believe God, show them how to take a rest in his name, show them how to rest on the promises of God, show them how to see the word of the Lord come to pass, show them how to trust and believe in God, show them that God is God, show them how to rest in his power, show them how to rest in his peace, show them how to rest in his truth, show them how to rest in his nature, show them how to rest in God, show them let they see Christ in you, may they see peace in you, the same peace that Jesus had, that same assurance that Jesus had, that when the disciples were scared and he was sleep in the boat, may that same kind of attitude be in you, that while the ship may be rocking in the nation, while the ship may be rocking in the country, may you be find yourself resting and sleeping in the boat. Ah, yeah, I'm resting in God. I got my feet propped up because I know that God said it's going to be all right. I know I got a purpose. I know I got to work. And God said that everything, and not just me, but because I've been praying for all of us, all of us are going to make it through this because God has assigned me here. God has assigned me to this boat. Hear that. Right. The reason why everyone in the boat is making it because I've been assigned to this boat. Right. And not one will be lost on my watch because I'm a watchman of God. I've been called of God. I'm a herald of God. I know my position. I know my place in prayer. I have the perspective of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I will herald that. I don't care if this, even if the ship was going under. In my last dying breath, underneath all the bubbles coming up out of my mouth, I will tell you that Jesus is Lord, and turn your life over to God, because we go on him now. Now, come on here, Jesus. I am a herald of hope, and because God has given me strength and encouraged my heart to know that we're going to make it, everything attached to me is going to make it. Everything connected to me will live. Everything that God has attached to me shall survive. And so guess what? Get yourself together. Stop all this anxiousness. Go to bed. Get you some rest. Eat you a meal. Put your clothes on. Bathe yourself. Wash your tail. Come on, somebody. Have hope in God. Know this, that we are going to make it through this. Come on here. Stop walking around your house and moping. Stop walking around your house terrified. Yes, we know things are bad, but guess what? You the light of the world. Come on here. He got Jesus is inside of you, the hope of glory. What you worried about? What you scared about? Buck up, believer. Stand tall and strong. Know who you are in God. Understand your place. Understand your position. Understand the word that's in your mouth. You got a sword in your mouth. My God, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got a sword in your mouth that weighs over the nation. Yes, God. The will and the way of God. The word of the Lord is in your mouth. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And heaven and earth will pass away, but the word will stand forever. So stand tall. Stand assured, stand knowing that the Lord is with you and you will make it through this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for who you are. We thank you because there's nobody but you, Lord God. You holy God. You are holy God. You are righteous God. You are mighty God, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, because you have called us, God. We thank you because we are your body. Lord God, we are your church, and you have chosen us, God. You have consecrated us as your vehicle in which your world, and your word, and your power, and your message will go through, God. You are the Lord, and there's nobody else but you, Father God. So we trust in your name. We hope only in you, Jesus. You are the hope of the nations and you are the hope of glory and we rest in your power. We rest in your grace. We say, yes, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the place you called us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the anointing you've given us. Thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Thank you for the power that is reverberating through your body, through your church. Father God, the all-surpassing power toward them that believe. That same power that raised Christ from the dead, working in us, Lord God, working through us, God. We thank you for the souls that are coming into the kingdom, God. We thank you, Jesus, that you've given every to get given to us, everyone that is in our ship, God, Lord. We thank you that as a nation, we won't just go under, Lord God, but that you are calling people, Lord God, even through this shipwreck, even through this storm, even through this turmoil, God, you are calling men to yourself, God. And we thank you, Jesus, that we are vessels in the hand of God that you would use to call men to yourself. Father God, we thank you, Jesus, for the power of your spirit, God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, that we have 
understanding in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because of this understanding, Father God, Lord, we thank you for the fruit that will be birthed in and through our lives, God, that you have called us for the t- such a time as this, that you have positioned us for such a time as this, Lord God. May we be strengthened now, God, strengthen the hearts of your people, Lord God, strengthen the hearts, oh, strengthen the hearts of your people, yeah, yeah, strengthen the minds of your people, strengthen the souls of your people. May the scales fall from their eyes and may they be able to see God. May they be able to know who they are. Maybe they understand their the kingdom perspective, their kingdom position, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they are a city that has been placed on a hill, that they give a light to all the world because of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we are salt, Lord God, Lord, that we are those that are helping, Lord God. We are those that cause society to be preserved because of the power of your spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we shake off that fear, God. Break every spirit of fear, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Break that spirit of fear, Lord God, that attached with it is a spirit of death. Father God, I pray and ask that you break it in the name of Jesus, God. Break its power. Break its hold, God. Getting the people to, Lord God, to get into fear that they would agree with death. Now, we come in agreement. We come out of agreement with the spirit of death. We come out of agreement with death that we will not perish here, that God has more to accomplish in us. God, God has more that he wants to accomplish through us. We thank you, Jesus. We do not come in in agreement with the spirit of fear or the spirit of worry or the spirit of anxiety or the spirit of death because you told us to be anxious for nothing. But with all prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which surpasses understanding. Will God our heart and our mind through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen the hearts of your people, God, that as we trust in you, we thank you for the peace of God that rest rule and abide in our homes that rest rule and abide in our minds, in the name of the Lord Jesus, God. We thank you because you have called us and we are going through this by the power of your spirit. And we look unto Jesus, Lord God, we look unto Jesus that we will be here and that we will be ready and waiting, Lord God, even as we look forward to your return, because we know, God, that you are soon to return. May we be ready, God. May we be like the wise virgins uh, that have extra oils in their lamps. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, give us your oil, God. Oh, nah. Yes, God. Give us oil, God. Give us oil that we will be ready, Lord God, for the day of the Lord. Give us oil that we will be ready for the day of the Lord. Give us oil, Lord God, that we will be ready so that when the bridegroom come, we come, Lord God, standing at the door ready to go in and enter into the joy of the master, God. That is our scope. That is our hope, Lord God. We don't care about the things of this world, but we look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We're looking to, our, Lord God, our building and our architect whose city is God. We look into you, Jesus, Father God, and we ask, God, that you would give us the oil, Lord God, that will make it through. Give us the oil to be ready, to be prepared as a bride ready for your return. God, we love you. God, we bless you. God, we magnify you. And that's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you all. Know that God is with us. Know that God has called us. And know that God is empowering us. Go in the grace and the strength of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you.